Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at the Warthog. Uh, this is the amphibious infantry fighting vehicle, most notably uh, what the Marine Corps uses trying to get their troops on board land from one of their assault ships. So the Warthog AIFV was first released in, in the United States in 1988, included the driver Sergeant Slaughter version 3. The Warthog also was available in 89 and discontinued, unfortunately, in 1990. So we do have a version 3 of Sergeant Slaughter, which is not one of the more flattering ones of him. Uh, I think version 1 is probably about the best, but, you know, this will kind of do. Um, it is what it is. The vehicle, though, uh, very iconic because of, uh, you know, thinking about it for the Marine Corps. Um I was in the army, but you know, still to see the Marines with their infantry fighting vehicle. But of course, they're going to need a more amphibious version than what I needed. Uh, they told me mine could swim, but I would never trust it. Uh, and that's just being honest. Uh, they gave us like a little tarp to to put ours up uh, to put up in order for ours to swim. And I looked at that and said, "This has got to be the most rinky-dink thing that I can come up with." But we have two nice big missiles sitting on top as well as a machine gun here. Um, and the best part is because we're looking at all this and I'm going to kind of stop clicking through here in a minute when we get done. Um, I actually have a D20 military vehicles and they were actually, you know, it was a nice system. They actually kind of go over the... Uh, the Amtrak, which is what the Warthog is based off of. So the Assault Phibius Vehicle Personnel named Amtrak is a fully tracked amphibious APC designed for the U.S. Marines, in our case for the G.I. Joe Force. The Amtrak is taller and wider than any other APC with a large hull with upturned bow. It is designed to be launched from offshore vessels using twin water jets for aqua or, or for aquatic propulsion and can operate through surf up to 10 feet high. After landing, it is used as an APC, although the bulk and the number of troops carried makes it big and a valuable target on the battlefield. So uh, I'll kind of leave it there. Oddly enough, now, they do have a machine gun on there. They have a 7.62 machine gun on the actual Amtrak, and they have uh, an automatic grenade launcher for support. So they really have it down to having lighter weapons on there so that way it floats a little bit better uh, than what, what I had when I was in the, the Army because I had the, the Bradley. Um, so this is my Marine counterpart to what I was driving for a year. Um, and they have a very nice vehicle. Now, their vehicle being longer and wider, um, it does state that it can carry 21 personnel. So I did change that in, in my own, making sure that I have that same designation in there. So unfortunately, we have easily broken and or lost pieces. The missiles and the antenna are easily lost or commonly missing because they broke or something like that. The Warthog was featured in several medias so we do have a micro machine we have a commercial it says it's in trading cards comic books and cartoons and all that so uh you know that's not a bad little micro machine of this it really isn't it has a nice view and then of course here we are sergeant slaughter and they do have the hat on him unlike the picture that we saw uh and he looks a little bit better but i think he looks really good in 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 his original form and oddly enough, and I never, I never had, I shouldn't say I didn't have this. I do remember having a copy of this, uh, but I don't remember if I had actually had a store-bought or later copy. I don't really remember because it was so many years ago. And I don't remember this raised uh, viewport here, but they do have the crew of three, which is from the Amtrak. So we do have a crew of three, and in the back we're supposed to be able to pile 21 troops inside. So, um, and let's see, we have 1988, we had the Warthog. In 2002, we had the Night Rhino, 
and then we had Renegades Warthog APV uh, in 2006. Uh, let's see. We have Renegades Warthog, which has got a kind of a desert camouflage. And then uh, the Night... Or this is the regular Warthog. And then the Night Rhino, I think, is going to be all black. Let's see what that... Yep, that's all black. Has some yellow on it. So it looks good. It's just one of those things of... You know, keeping it as a small place. I think the original version is probably the best. It is a very iconic look to it. And it was $9.29 back in 1988. So going way back when. Um, yeah, it's it, 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 it harkens back. To, you know, to me, it, it's one of those things of this is, like I said, this is my Marine counterpart to my being a Bradley driver for a year. So. All right. So hopefully I've, I've got a good encompassing vision of what this really is and some of this i did grab off off of the book and other stuff i just kind of came up with my own so we do have the warthog um this is a troop transport speeder scale um let's see i will have to up the body strength i, I think i have the body strength a little wrong on this so this is roughly about 28 or 26 feet uh, just shy of eight meters, so I just rounded it up to eight meters. Has a crew of three, passengers of 21. Cargo capacity is actually stated for the Amtrak as being 1,200 pounds. Uh, of course, I'm going to have it at full coverage. Maneuverability is going to be a... Uh, I took this off of one of the other ones just for getting everything, and then I kind of changed things up. So I left it as a plus two... Um, Maybe we're, I think we're going to update that to a 1D plus 2. So not quite 2D. Uh, I'm trying to be generous, but I don't want to get too carried away. Now, the move part, I do want to note that this goes um, 45 miles an hour on the ground. And I think it, it was mentioning 54 kilometers an hour. I think that's the equivalent. Now, if I'm wrong, I do apologize. But in the water, and this was really nice for me to be able to capture out of the book because it actually has the actual stats for the base vehicle. It only goes about eight miles an hour in the water. So 19 kilometers an hour. So I'm thinking I'm way off on my uh, kilometers an hour for my land move, but you get the idea. I'm here in the States. So of course I'm going to go off the 45 miles an hour more so than the 54 and just doing it in a game, I'm not going to worry too much about it unless I'm doing some sort of chase scene. But I don't think I'm going to worry too much about a chase here with uh, the Warthog. Uh, unless something's chasing me, uh, like another tank is or something. But, you know, it is what it is. All right. So we do have the light blaster, blaster cannon, which is up here. Um, now, the one I grabbed was actually speeder scale. Um, if this is 762, you know, I think we'll leave that be because 762, uh, fire control of 2D damage is four. Because now that if that goes up or to personnel skill, that's going to be um, 60 damage, and I think that really makes sense because that's where I was kind of going with it. Uh, but then you're going to lose your fire control addition. Uh, we have two concussion missiles. I did up that to Walker scale because these are big honking missiles. So I did want to leave that there. Fire control of 4D. Now in the schematic, it talks about having guidance systems or whatever in the missiles. So I did want to leave that in there. And it does have an 8D damage being something that big, I fear, is going to have quite a bit of firepower. But if I keep it in con uh, consistency with the concussion missiles, it should be 8D anyways. So just leaving it in that frame, just what scale do we have it at is really where we want to go with. Uh, smaller the missile, you know, the smaller the scale, you, you get the point. Um, so I think that gets us a good feel of the vehicle. And it, like I said, it is an iconic vehicle to me because I look at it as, you know, something to be able to tangibly look at in a military sense. I know that this has been out there. Um, and when I was in the Army, you know, being very sheltered, 
say it in that regard, of all the different military vehicles we did have in real life, I remember the first time I saw like the bridge layer. It just blew my mind because I'm just like, well, this is a G.I. Joe vehicle. I never thought that we actually had these in real life. And of course, yes, we do. So, you know, to take a, a, a young-minded individual uh, that's never had to think about all the different military vehicles that we truly have in the world and to be able to see them all sprawled out because I was in Egypt at the time, so the Egyptians had, had some of their stuff and we had some of our stuff. So it was interesting to see all of it and to say this looks like this from G.I. Joe and everything else. And it's, you know, it is fun and exciting for a young kid geeking out on just looking at it all. So with that, thanks so very much for joining me today. Thanks for listening to me kind of rant and rave about the, the silliness of, of the world in my view. Uh, hopefully I'm not too crazy. Uh, glad to have you stop by all the time. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video.